I, I just want to get started by saying, um, you know, you are more inspirational than I think you realize. You know, I, you. I didn't realize how jittery I would be speaking to you and how excited and just, oh my goodness. Oh, you know, I'm just, I have so many questions, so many things I want to talk about, and we only have an hour to spend together. Um, and uh, first off, I want to say it's almost a blessing that you are where you are today because you wouldn't, you wouldn't, first off, you wouldn't have an amazing wife. Yes. If it wasn't for your attempted suicide when you were 16 years old. Yeah. Yeah. And, and as much as it's, it's weird to say, it it almost is a blessing in disguise. Yeah, absolutely. I, I really feel that a a lot. And I felt that way for quite a while. Um, and I, I, I've recently, I, I've, I like to say that a, I was given the gift of blindness so that I can help others. And that, that is such an amazing outlook, uh, and, and disposition. And, you know, a lot of people would say, and I hate the word, so excuse me, but disability, I completely disagree with the word. I think it's a this ability because I think that by losing the ability to do that, you've gained the knowledge, the skill, and the ability to do that. Yeah, definitely. It's like disabled people aren't broken. We just have to go through the world in a different way. Exactly. And, you know, as I was telling you earlier before we started recording, I, I could almost tell your story by how much I viewed your videos on YouTube, on, I almost said Twitch, um, (laughs) uh, TikTok, on just everything from your website. And we're going to get into all of that. Yeah. But yeah. And that, that is all because of Annie. I don't really, I, I am not a computer guy. Like that's, that's something that's actually been a problem as a blind person, but it, without Annie, nobody would know who I was. <laughs> and, and and I don't know if she's sitting next to you, but hello, Annie, if you are. Oh, she's she's not. She actually uh, is uh, busy, and, uh, and she's uh, keeping the dog tame <laughs> because he, uh, he does these, like, spontaneous freakouts if you hear something outside, so. <laughs> yeah, I have, a, I have a pit bull, so I, she does the uh, same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and you guys are both artists in your own right. You're yeah. a, a wood master. I almost want to call it. You, you, Thank you. You've worked wood. You've worked pianos. You've worked clay. Yeah. And your wife does art as well. She does paintings. And much more, actually. She, uh, uh, she's done a lot of mixed media stuff in the past. Um, I, like cross stitch uh, combined with ink, uh, and she actually made a, a family portrait for somebody with cross stitch and and ink. And uh, boy, let's see here. She was a photographer for quite some time, um, professionally, and it's it's awesome. Like we've both been in in museums around here, and uh, there's a. a before all the COVID-19 stuff happened, uh, I had actually been, we both actually were part of a tactile art dis, uh, or exhibit at the Portland Art Museum. And uh, that was really cool. It was specifically for blind people to come through and feel the art. And they, after that, it was such a success. They've actually asked Annie and I and a couple other artists to make a piece for a permanent display. Wow. And yeah. It was, it's, it's been just so amazing. It, That's it, exciting. It, yeah. That's really exciting. And, you know, I've, I've learned through all of your videos and all the things that you do that you go through life the same as everybody else, just a little bit different. And I've mm-hmm. noticed that one of the things that you do is you kind of do a morning affirmation with music. Yes, yes. And How did that I, start? Where did that come from? Well, um, I, I really love to cruise. There's some Amazon music playlists where it's like every week they, they put new music on there for you. And there's this song called Mental Karate by Thumposaurus. 
And I love the message because the, the chorus is mental karate, chopping all the bad thoughts. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I heard that. I was like, wow, that is the perfect song to start the day with. And then I, on the same one, a playlist, I came across Best Day of My Life by Aquabats. And then uh, Lucky Day by 11 Acorn Lane. And that's our, that's our three song morning mojo playlist. I love it. I love it. That is, that is, that just makes me feel good. I, I'm going to have to look up mental karate now. Oh, it's so good. You'll love it. Um, one of the things I'd like to talk about is of course, we're going to touch briefly on the attempted suicide when you were 16. Mm-hmm. But what I want to mm-hmm. talk about is were your parents heavy into music? Like, do you remember a song from not, when you were 16? Not really. Um, I mean, when we were on car, you know, long car trips and stuff like that, we'd listen to music, but it was mainly just, you know, classic radio stations. So, it, but I guess that really did influence me because all through high school, I, I preferred a lot of the classic rock to the modern music. Okay. Um, and, and stuff like that. So, so I, I, I think that did have a big influence on it. And I don't ever recall any of these uh, other interviews that you've done that I've dug into and done research on ever talking about your parents. Can you remind me what they did? Yeah, well, you know, to tell the truth, I never really have talked much about them other than how they, they rescued me. Um, my dad has, was in the mining industry for oh, almost 50 years. And he was uh, an electrician and he would do, uh, I mean, he was actually the, the head honcho 911 service for him for wow. quite a while. Like I remember him getting calls in the middle of the night and he'd have to go out to the mine and fix things. And he even um, wrote from scratch one of the first, it's called a digital drive program. And that's what all the like really big mining equipment, that's how it's all controlled now. And it used to be a, a, a room the size of a living room full of fuses and switches and relays and, and all that kind of stuff. And he, he wrote a computer program that condensed all that down into a computer about the size of a refrigerator. And I remember he spent months and months on that. And now the, the industry standard is digital drive systems. That's neat. That's really yeah. neat. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, my mom, she, for, for uh, most uh, of their relationship, she was a stay at home mom. I've got three brothers and two sisters, all of them older. And so she, she had more than enough to take care of there, but she did work for a, a job service, a, a workforce job service for about 10 years when I was growing up. And nice. so it, it, it's, it's been pretty cool i i really look up to my parents they a it, it just they are also a part of why i'm who i am today of course that's amazing i love that now i i want to talk about uh, of course uh when you were 16 years old uh you fell into a depression and anxiety high anxiety uh yeah. and attempted suicide uh by yeah. a self-inflicted gunshot where not only did you lose your sight, but you also lost your smell. Yes. And that has got to be, and you know, I, I sit here and, and of course, I mean, I can barely keep my eyes closed for 60 seconds without wondering what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. And then I go, I smell my wife's perfume Mm -hmm. or, you know, I I smell my kids getting into the fruit snacks or, or just something. Yeah. I can't imagine. I mean, now that's two senses that you've lost, but you've gained so much more in feel. And I almost want to say, I almost want to say like, uh, like your surroundings have been enhanced. In a way, kind of, there's the, I, I have this condition that many uh, blind people that have had vision uh, previously get it's called Charles Bonnet syndrome or Charles Bonnet syndrome, depending on how you, I'm not sure the pronunciation. And uh, basically what it is, is they, they think it's sort of like your, the visual cortex of your brain keeping itself entertained. And it's uh, it, it, a lot of times it's uh, people's faces or geometric patterns or, or images, that kind of thing. And 
uh, for me, uh, starting at one year after I became blind, I have uh, the, my entire field of view, so to speak, is taken up by um, uh, red with black speckles in it, kind of like the snow on an old TV screen, static on an old TV screen. Then there's blue that kind of, it, it's just kind of like blobbish that moves in and out and changes. And then the, the really cool thing about it though, is I've been able to basically turn that into a background, call it wallpaper, and use my visual imagination to put anything else I want over the top of it. That's how I, I design the things I do. It's like I have a computer design program in my mind. And I also imagine all my surroundings too. I, I get a, you know, eventually I get a, a three-dimensional map and I turn it all into a, a vision in my mind. And that's one of the reasons I'm able to, to do what I can. So for me, it's, it's actually been a very beneficial thing. And for a lot of people, it's, it's very distracting and, and disturbing. But luckily for me, it's been a good thing. And, that, and, and again, you, I don't know, John, I don't know if you've noticed that you do this or not, but you smile a lot. I do. <laughs> I, I, one of my nicknames in high school was Smiley. Yeah, I can see why. And and it's such a good, I think that's why it made me feel so comfortable approaching you and Annie about requesting this interview. You mm -hmm. seem so welcoming to discussing it. Uh, where While a lot of people would seem, I guess, turned off by the idea of discussing uh, mm -hmm. a past mistake, if you will, or, or a, a regrettable yeah. action that they did, yeah. you kind yeah. of embrace it. Yeah, it 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 changed my life fundamentally, of course. I mean, how could it not? But it, I guess, since I was a teenager, I wanted to be as normal as possible. And so I approached it almost as a challenge. And, and my, my visual, visual imagination uh, has, like right from the start, was very sharp. And I think... I, because I, I had seen everything where I was in my, in my town. So I could just, just, you know, like I said, I could see it. I knew exactly where I was and what was around me. So that helped me kind of sharpen my skills a bit. Now, uh, how long after you became blind did you meet Annie? Oh, that was actually just when I moved up here. I met her in 2012. So let's see here. That would be... 16 years after yeah it's somewhere in that neighborhood could uh could you share with the audience your story about putting your hand in her paint yes definitely i love um, the story so uh so i came up to vancouver to uh vancouver washington just north of portland oregon uh to attend the emu freeze school of piano technology for the blind and they they teach they well and unfortunately they just they had to shut down a few years ago but um they they taught tuning and basic repair and honestly i wasn't the greatest tuner so but i'm a great mechanic <laughs> so uh, i uh, there's a gentleman there named rick Patton, who uh he was going to retire uh and he wanted to pass his knowledge on and so and he saw some of the uh, woodwork that I've done and immediately uh, decided to mentor me. And so I, I was actually, uh, it was summertime. And so I was there even through the summertime because I was learning to restring pianos and new hammers and the, the whole bit right from the ground up. And Annie was painting a piano for a fundraiser and that they did every year and so i i walk into the workroom where she's painting the piano and i'm also fixing a, a separate piano and like a like an iron bar to a magnet just hand in the paint that's <laughs> it, if there's wet paint around i will put my hand in it <laughs> between between mm -hmm. you putting your hand in annie's paint between mm -hmm. your first date picking peas yeah. And your goblin friend that follows you around, John. I just I love hearing you. I just I love hearing you speak. Thank you. I, One of the things that made Annie fall in love with me is 
I had a playlist that I was playing and I had uh, Big Yellow Taxi by Joni Mitchell on there. And, and she said that was one of the things that made her fall in love with me. You and Annie have been married now for almost 10 years. No, no, we've been together for almost 10 oh, years, but me, we, we got married in 2015. Got married in 2015, and uh, she bought you your first, it's called a lathe? Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she bought me the, it, I, I've used a lathe for several years before that, but it was my friend's, and she bought me my own on uh, my birthday, it was 2016, and not too long after she bought it for me, I, I made a little uh, dresser top jewelry dish for her mom and uh, she posted it on Facebook. And within one day, there's about 15 people that said, I want one. And so that's, that's where the professional part of it started. And uh, could, could you tell everybody about the very first bowl you made that has some of your DNA in it? Ah, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, I, I, uh, the, the, I had only made, a, it's called spindle turnings up until that point, I think that, like chair legs, that kind of thing. And a bowl is kind of a different animal. And I, uh, I had this bowl that I actually uh, got the wood from a, an old piano and, uh, the, uh, some, and then I, some other wood that I had and I glued it together. And I, I I was carving along on there, and the, the funny part about it too is uh, the day before I hurt myself carving that same bowl, a friend of ours, Chris Martin, had come and done a, a little kind of podcast video, and then the next day, I'm carving along, and I was doing something I know I shouldn't have been doing. I had my finger in the wrong place. And I wasn't, didn't have a nice firm grip on the chisel and it dug in and I got stuck between a, a part of the lathe called the tool rest, which is immobile and the, the side of the chisel and it, it squished my finger really bad. 11 stitches yep. in eight weeks to heal up. I, I left a trail of blood like a wounded cowboy in a John Wayne movie all the way to <laughs> <the> back door. <laughs> so it. that one... Uh, that one taught me a valuable lesson. Don't put your finger there, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and so and the, it happened so fast that the the pain doesn't even register until later. The, and the first thought that went through my mind is, man, now it's going to be weeks before I can finish this bowl. <laughs> <laughs> and and you go on to say that uh, the very first bowl you ever made has my yeah. DNA in it. Yeah, sure enough. <laughs> yeah, that one, uh, that is scientifically uh, verifiable that that is my bowl. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. No kidding. <laughs> now, uh, of course, where do you find time? Because between, between wood carving, uh, what do you call it? Cooking in the dark? Yeah, cooking with the lights out. Cooking with the lights out, sorry. Yeah. Um, no, it's okay. Uh, and and all these other videos that you and Annie actually do, I think you've really like embraced TikTok and and YouTube oh, more. Yeah. Yeah, TikTok has been a an incredible resource for us. I cannot state enough how much that has impacted our business and and not just our business actually. One of the best impacts it's had is I'm able to spread my message of, of keep on keeping on. I'm able to educate people about blindness and other disabilities and, and dispel the ignorance that's around them. And I'm able to do that on literally a global scale. Yes. And when I first got into, you know, inspirational speaking and stuff, of course it was all just local because in that particular uh, field, it takes a long, long time to build a reputation where you're actually going around to like trade shows and stuff like that. And within just a couple of months, I, I had over a hundred thousand followers and I'm literally being able to spread my message on a global scale. And that, that takes a lifetime otherwise. And, and there's people, there's a man and his uh, son in Portugal that we've actually sent some videos back and forth. And he said that my videos really give him hope and, and 
help him out. And that just, I can't even describe to you how much that means to me. And, and just it, TikTok is, is incredible. It really is. Now you have a video that's on YouTube that I'd like to share the 33 second audio for. Uh-huh. Or someone that, do you know what this is for? The uh, are, are you talking about the uh, out of sight landscaping? Out of sight landscaping. I'm yeah, just gonna play it here real quick. Hang on. Hi, I'm John, owner of Out of Sight Landscaping. Here at Out of Sight Landscaping, we will take care of all of your yard needs. We'll get rid of all those pesky weeds. We'll help keep your lawn healthy and vibrant. At Out of Sight Landscaping, our slogan is, looks good to me. And we hope it does. And you have a sense of humor, John. That's the best part about it. Thank you. It's yeah. Like, like hey, when you, were, you were pushing that lawnmower and you bumped into a tree and then started a fight with the tree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Annie and I had a lot of fun putting that one together. I would love I would love to just spend a day just kind of watching you go. I mean, again, between woodworking and, and living life, and of course you mentioned you have a dog, so that's got to be, you know, it's another thing that, you know, here's the thing. Mental map, absolutely, totally get it. But when the dog gets by, it's like, oh, wait a second, where are you? Well, the, the the dog is pretty easy to keep track of. <laughs> we got hardwood floors, neat ah, picks and packs all over. Very the place. good. Okay, you see, hey, my uh-huh. my wife has bought me a new wedding ring every two or three years uh, since we've been uh-huh. married. We we got married in our early twenties. We'll be married uh, nine years this year. So I've grown out of four or five different rings. She bought me a uh-huh. necklace to put it on, and I think I think she uses it as a cat bell. Oh yeah. So she knows that, that I'm. She knows you're coming. <laughs> well, this way she knows that I'm hanging out in the pantry too long. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, that can't be my keys. It's not my keys at all. It's it's these four <laughs> rings around my neck. I'm like, ah, she yeah, got me. For she, uh, Andy and I's second wedding anniversary, I made wooden rings for us, and she wears hers on the necklace. That's neat. See, I've always I've always been interested in that, but I was always been afraid of uh, splinters and swelling. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as the as far as swelling goes, it doesn't the wood doesn't really, and uh, splinters. I I sand it super smooth, so there's no possibility of splinters. Nice, you know. I I want to talk about, of course, uh, how you've adapted uh, in life to woodworking and. I forget what you call it, but you have a specific tool that helps you measure. I forgot to grab it. I do. It's called a rotomatic. Um, and it's very simple. I, there's actually a video I put on TikTok about yes. it. Yes. Um, and it's a it's basically a, a threaded rod, six and a half inches long, and it's machined uh, flat on the top and bottom. And then on the top, it has a tab that sticks up every half inch. And then there's a, a wide rectangular shaped nut and a locking nut that every every full turn of that nut is one sixteenth of an inch. And let me tell you, I can measure more accurately with that than I ever could when I could see. It's just, it's such a nice tool. And it's so simple. It's it literally just a, a special bolt with some special nuts on it and, and some aluminum extensions I can uh, attached to it also. Now I can't remember. Did you make that or did somebody make that for you? No, I actually bought that from a company oh, no. called science supplies for the blind. And I got lucky too. They stopped manufacturing them right around the time I bought mine. And uh, I, I, I got one of the last five in the, in the, it, that had ever been made. And uh, it, luckily I have a friend who's a machinist and he made me another one because it's really handy to have two, Uh, but the, the patent expired. So it'd be amazing if somebody could start making them again too, because like I said, they are hands down the best tactile measuring tool I've ever come across. Now, of course, once you do that, uh, I I see you make, you know, some small cuts so that you can measure things that way and, and know, but you've been, you've been doing, handwork 
for as long as you've been alive. I remember, I think it was in one of your videos, you said it was like a week or two after you had uh, gone blind, you were changing the wheel bearings in your car. Yeah, yeah. I, I've, I've loved mechanics all, all my life. My dad and I, uh, when I was growing up, I'd always help him fix cars. And so I helped him replace a couple of uh, uh, axles, the front axles and some cars, wheel bearings, uh, front and rear brakes, uh, spark plugs, oil changes, all kinds of stuff. And I just love it. And since I have such a vivid visual imagination, I was able to, it was, it was one month after I got out of the hospital. One month. I, I replaced the rear wheel bearings on my old car. And, and I just, I just remembered every single step from when I was growing up. And it, it is, I love doing that kind of stuff. I, I'm, it, it's, I'm really blessed that I'm able to connect the the three dimensional things that I feel in into such a visual image is I like to call it my uh, my mind hand coordination. <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure how to put it. You know, it's not exactly hand eye coordination. No, but. <laughs> and of course, you have uh, you have silly names for some of your tools. I do, I do. the The biggest chisel I have, I call Big Jake. <laughs> I'm I'm a big John Wayne fan. Yeah. And so uh, I got Big Jake in Mississippi. Those are from John Wayne movies. Um, I, I've got these two big old chisels that look almost like tomahawks. And so I call them battle axe one and two. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then I got this big sander that sits on its own pedestal. And that's Colonel Sanders. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Now, it's also because of your relationship uh, with Annie and the community uh, of just being you. You've developed uh, local sources for your wood. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, there's been several times that people have donated fresh fallen uh, uh, trees, the the wood that they've gotten from it. And then uh, there's a friend of mine that lives about oh seven miles down the road, uh, and he has a farm. And he's also a wood turner and he's got piles of stuff that he's harvested over the years that it's even all seasoned and ready to go. And that's been pretty cool because I love this area. When I first moved up here, uh, the only way I can describe it is I felt like my soul was home. And, and so I just, I love to use the wood from this area too. I bet that's really comforting. It is. Yeah. I said, I'm, I'm from New York. I can sleep. I, I can probably sleep on the streets of New York and fall right to sleep with the sounds of everything going on. You know, the cabs going by, the horns, yeah. the, you know, yeah. the steam pipes going. My wife would have a hard time concentrating. I, I would probably have a hard time with that, too, growing up in small towns where, I mean, in, in uh, the town I grew up in, uh, Craig in Colorado, it's small enough that past about 1030, it's like a deserted movie set. <laughs> That's cool. you, you got the the cops cruising around and you're so you're you're on set security basically and that's about it that's neat <laughs> <laughs> john what's Sorry. in your playlist right now oh boy tons of stuff i uh, i've got a, a a playlist i call working tunes that's about 30 hours worth of music nice you and want, you uh, one of those uh, there's everything from Marilyn Manson to Jason Mraz. There's uh, Fits in the Tantrums, Allison Krauss, Katy Perry, uh, Stone Temple Pilots, Jimi Hendrix, uh, just all over the place. Um, Mike Dawes, that's one of my favorites. He's a fingerstyle guitarist. And uh, he, it's, if you're not familiar with fingerstyle guitar, it's, uh, they, they don't just, just strum it. They they uh, tune their guitar specifically so that the top string is a lower octave than usual to be the bass. Um, the uh, other strings are tuned a little bit slow, uh, uh, slack so that they can slap it and make it like a snare drum kind of a sound. And then they, they tap their fingers on the guitar, uh, even like slide his fingers up and down to make kind of a zip sound. And it sounds like there's three different people playing guitars. And uh, 
it's just amazing. He he's an English uh, musician. Hey, this is John Furness, aka the Blind Woodsman, who will be back after this. Uh, do you play any instruments, sir? I I don't. I used to in uh, junior high. I played alto sax. Um, well, first I played tuba. And then I played alto sax, and I played around with the bass guitar a little bit, but I never really did pick that up. And uh, it kind of surprises people that I I don't know how to play a piano, even though I literally rebuilt pianos. <laughs> I don't know how to play one, and I never have the desire to learn either. <laughs> it's, no, I think I think your quote is uh, they're all the same, all eleven thousand parts of them. Yes, yes. <laughs> I are. told you, man. I did my research on you. <laughs> and, and I can just imagine a lot of people talk to you and, and they hit the same subjects, but I, I love to, I love to explore people's soundtrack of life, their playlist of life, oh, yeah. because yeah. I feel like, you know, yes, we can share a video or we can share a photograph mm -hmm. of, Hey, this is what my weekend was like or whatever. But mm -hmm. sometimes I really feel like music is a, is a bigger window to the soul because I feel like we often guard that. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I, I it, it, that's something that I, I've come to the the feeling that the music I like is the music I like, whatever anybody else thinks of it. And so when I'm out in my shop, I'll they I'll have it really turned up, jamming to a a like a a knife party song, which is like a really kind of intense uh, dance music or electronic dance music. And then the next song that might come on is is Underdog by Alicia Keys. And let me tell you, both of them stay at the same volume. Oh yes. Oh yes. And and I love I love how you have this huge range of different things that you listen to. It really it it goes to show that you don't have to just be caught up in one genre. And that's why I, I I'm just I'm really just still so excited and still jittery the fact that I even got to talk to you. Not not Thank the you. fact that you're guarded and, and held off because you're not. You are so welcoming and so oh no look here and and watching all the videos that you put up of people in your space like that's got to be different when people come in and film. Yes, they're filming. They're trying to learn about you, but it's like I still got work to do. <laughs> well, see, it really doesn't bother me honestly because like when I was. Uh, really learning and honing my woodworking skills. It was uh, after I had gone to this uh, school for the blind in Salt Lake City, and uh, I had become really close friends with the woodshop teacher there. And he retired while I was still going to the school. And we uh, started hanging out and I, I would we'd build stuff together. And uh, so that, that was really awesome. And uh, I, I, I lost my train of thought. Where was I? <laughs> you're you're, you're a wood teacher. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, where were we before that? I'm sorry. Sometimes my memory just... No, it's okay. We were talking about people being in your space. Oh, yes, yes. Sorry about that. Uh, so uh, since I learned, I, I would build things together with him, uh, my, my woodshop teacher from the school, a it didn't bother me to have people around because we would literally just, just talk and listen to music while we were working. Uh, so it, it was kind of nice, honestly. And as long as they uh, didn't get in my way, because I, when I'm, when I'm on the lathe, I'm in the zone yeah. and I keep my chisels in my back pocket. And so when I, when I grab a chisel, I flip it around in my fingers like a baton to get the right end going. So if you're, if you're a little too close, you might catch a chisel handle. In the face. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't need that. Uh, before yeah. we get to some of the things that you featured on TikTok, uh -huh. I want to talk about something that you mentioned earlier, dispelling some of the um, mm -hmm. uh, stereotypes of yeah. the blind. Yes. Well, not of the blind, but of what people believe of the blind. Absolutely. What are, what are, some, of the, what are some of those that you're having to deal with? Well, like that, that blind people are feeble, uh, you know, that, that we always need help. There's, there's the kind of people that I like to call the, they, they make me let them help me. Huh. <laughs> they grab on and drag me somewhere or, or they'll just start yelling out random directions because they see me 
walking up to a, a convenience store, for instance. And I mean, I, I get that their, their intentions are pure or in the right place or whatever, but that, that can be very confusing because generally I know where I'm going. I, you know, there's, there's landmarks and touch points and there's, there's techniques, you know. And so we teach people that, you know, ask first, say, hey, do you, do you need help? Can I guide you somewhere? So kind um, of announce yourself? Yeah, yeah, announce yourself. Also, when you're speaking with a blind person, you're in a conversation with them. If you're going to leave that conversation, let them know. I can't tell you how many times I've I've had half a conversation with thin air because the person I was talking to <laughs> left and didn't tell me. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's not funny, but I, I find myself doing it all the time. You know, it is funny. I mean, it, I, I get it though, because it's not, you know, it's people aren't familiar with blindness. And so I, I and and I get that. I'm, I'm understanding about it and it, because I, I want to educate people about it. And I know that they're not, the other part of it is I know they're not doing it on purpose. They're, it, it's not, you know, like they're not doing it to disrespect me. It's just something that they don't think about because they don't deal with blind people. Nice. You know, and, and I didn't so, even think about that. I, I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, there, there you go. I mean, there's little things that just, you know, uh, for instance, if you're leaving a blind person's home, it's polite to turn the lights off. <laughs> really? Yeah, you know, because I mean, if, well, totally blind people, you know, like me, the, having the lights on, if there's nobody with vision around, that's just burning electricity. Yeah. Like my shop is definitely a blind guy's wood shop. It's so dark in there that usually I have to open all the doors for people to film. I, I've, I've seen you open the garage, the whole garage door wide open. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, I, I've also learned, uh, through some of the reading that I've done on you that you actually unplug everything. Yeah. Yeah. I, I generally, when I'm uh, particularly with the table saw, any saw, I like to have it unplugged while I'm setting up my measurement and, and my, Something I really like, I've gotten uh, now uh, due to a, a grant from the Artist Trust of, uh, Trust of Washington, uh, I was able to get what's called a sliding double bevel compound miter saw. Great. And the awesome thing about that is it, it slides far enough that I never have to actually use the table saw because with lathe work, you're never working, I mean, unless you've got a monster lathe, you're never working with pieces of wood that are more than about 12 or 13 inches long. And so I never really have to use my table saw. And the beauty of the miter saw is it's, it's set up on its own stand and it's all uh, 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 contained or whatever. And when you set up your cut, you can clamp the wood down to the stand of the saw and then I never have to have my hand anywhere near the blade at all. So it's a, it's a much safer way of using the saw. Now, can you read Braille? I know Braille, but the calluses on my fingers are so thick, I can't really God. read. Like, I can read a, a bathroom sign or a number on a, a, you know, a room or whatever. Yeah. But as far as, like, actually reading a page, a page of Braille, no. I... I that totally got, makes sense, though. You have calluses on your fingers from all that hard work, and that yeah. that makes sense. Yeah. And, of course, one of the many things that I saw on TikTok was this beautiful, beautiful bowl. It looked like a bowl, but it had this stand in the middle. And I go, okay, so you can throw your keys in there. No, that has nothing to do with keys. Then you drop mm -hmm. the phone in there, and I'm like, holy crap. Mm -hmm. This man's a genius. And <laughs> now I know I know you you have one there with you, and I know it's something that you feature a lot. But I yeah. want to talk about I want to talk about this in your mind CAD program. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Well, um, it's I can see what I'm making right in front of me. I, I when I design something, I I put the the different colors together, the different layers. I I change the design and and uh, make it work with the layers and the colors. And, uh, and 
so I'm I'm able I see the finished piece before the the it's even gone on the lathe. It's a I it, and in a way I think I really have an advantage in that because I it reminds me of a quote by uh, I think it's Leonardo da Vinci that someone asked him how can you carve such a beautiful statue out of marble and he says it was already there I just took away the excess and the way my imagination works that really definitely applies to the way I, I make my my projects and I think it's probably the same way that you design some of your um, TikToks and some of your uh, cooking with the lights out video you already know what you want to do and I'm yeah. I, and and as I'm sure Annie has made life a lot easier for you with you know whether it be labeling or keeping yeah. what they're supposed to it's almost kind of like a life with OCD everything has its place you know every every measuring spoon has its place you know exactly yeah. what it's supposed to be and and I can't imagine uh, listen my life is hectic as it is you know two kids running around dog running around trees falling outside oh yeah i can't imagine Boy. having to know where everything is well and out in my shop i have an extremely bad habit particularly for blind people i don't put things away so much as down so yeah. it, it's it's where i used it last and i might not necessarily remember where i used it last <laughs> so I, I do try to keep things as organized as possible, though. It, it definitely helps. There's a, there's certain particular things like my measuring devices. Those all go, they're all put away after they've been used because without those, the, everything goes off the rails. You want to talk about your goblin friend? Oh, yeah, my, my little buddy. <laughs> we call him <laughs> our fur baby. That's, that's Pickle. <laughs> no, I'm and, talking about uh, the goblin that moves stuff on you. Oh, yes, yes, that goblin. Okay, so all blind people have a, a little a gremlin or goblin, whatever you want to call it, that follows them around. And when they drop things, the, the goblin likes to kick it. So you can't <laughs> find it very easy. Yeah, yeah. And sometimes he just steals it outright. He's got some of the my tools in his belt that I'd sure like to have back. <laughs> as soon as I heard you say that, I'm like, oh my God, that's hysterical. <laughs> and it's so true, so true. The, honestly, the, the thing that frustrates me the most about blindness is having to try and find something. Because when you're looking for something and you're blind, you have to literally feel every flat surface of every square inch of the room that you are in yeah. to find it. And it could be something that is literally sitting out in plain view, but it might be right next to something that feels kind of like it, but hides it or, you know, so, so man, sometimes I've spent 90 minutes looking for something that, that I couldn't do without. And I can imagine some of the, some of the, and you know what, I, excuse me, because I don't have a clue about uh, uh, mechanics. Listen, I have a motorcycle and I'm lucky I can put that back together half the time. <laughs> I, I suck at cars, man. I have a motorcycle and it took me probably two and a half hours to put neon lights on my motorcycle. Because <laughs> I'm like, something, where does this go? Oh, something I found with mechanics and I run into this all the time. You say, oh, it'll just take a few minutes. And two or three hours later, you're cinching down the last bolt. That's just how it seems to go. You yeah. know, and, and even, you know, even for me, I've been, and I'm by no means a master mechanic at all. You know, I, I just have practical experience. But it, I do have a lot of practical experience. And even then, it's still like, You'll you'll run into one little thing that oh man how do I how do I get a wrench in there or or you know just different kind of stuff like that. I had an experience with my son. I was uh, changing the oil on my motorcycle, mm -hmm. and the oil filter is located you know under and all the way back, uh -huh. probably about a foot from the back tire. 
and it was yeah. so caked on with oil. I decided, okay, well, this is going to be an easy thing to do. I don't have uh, an, an oil wrench, an oil filter wrench. Yeah. So I stabbed it with the screwdriver. Uh -huh. That's the old one. Yeah. My son freaks out. My dad stabbed his bike. My dad stabbed his bike. It's broken. <laughs> He's, it's not gonna... No, son, this is the... <laughs> Never mind. Yeah, that, that reminds me of uh, when I was growing up, we had this little white Toyota pickup. And it was nice. I love that thing. I literally drove it since I was seven years old because we grew up, you know, I grew up in a little town. We go out on the dirt roads, but we would always change the oil on it. Now, the thing with that truck is the engine compartment was just packed full of, you know, all the engine and everything. And the oil filter was at this really odd angle and packed in there real tight. So, it didn't, we must have bought four or five different oil filter wrenches and you just couldn't get enough leverage because of the angle. So we'd, we, we'd cuss and spit and say it was <laughs> terrible and everything. And then finally just put a screwdriver through it and turn it with that. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it worked. It, yeah, it works great. I mean, you gotta be careful not to, uh, you know, stab the, the nipple in the middle, you know, the, but uh, yeah, that I will never forget. The for fifteen twenty minutes, he'd try and get that in there, and he'd have me try to get in there because I had smaller hands, and it just just couldn't get enough leverage on it. I, I was I was so proud of myself because I, again, I suck at mechanics. I I suck at anything that has a, a motor that I can't fix by myself. Most of the time, I can do electric. Uh, and, and by that, I mean, I can plug in my soundboard and move it to another, you know, location. Um, I got it. But as soon as I stabbed that, my son's like, <gasps> my dad stabbed his bike. I, I think I traumatized uh, him. <laughs> but uh, I, you know, with uh, with that sound amplifier that you made for smart, mm -hmm. did it, did you, and this is going to sound really stupid coming out of my mouth, but do you have any like scientific knowledge of, of how much more it does amplify? Well, it, it, the general consensus, consensus seems to be uh, it doubles the volume. Okay. Um, and uh, the, I, I, I basically, I, the idea started out because uh, when you take your smartphone and you lay it on a flat surface, it amplifies it a little bit because it, it bounces off. Yeah. And so I thought, hey, if I make a bowl, that would be perfect. So I made just like a regular you know, bowl, just like any bowl and, and made it real thin. And when I put my phone down in there, it sounded terrible. It didn't even sound as good as when you put it on a table. So I sat back, sat down and thought about it a little bit. And in the past I had made this bowl and it had a, a flat bottom and the side came kind of straight up. And then I had curved the top rim over so think of it kind of like a car tire without the, the rim in it. Yeah. And I thought to myself, you know, that overhang would probably bounce the sound around pretty good and make it kind of like an echo chamber. So I laid the phone down in that bowl and it sounded really good. And then I, I tilted it up and the more I tilted it up, the better it sounded. So that's how I, uh, I and I, I got thinking about it. I've I've you know taken apart speaker boxes before, and I kind of know how speakers themselves are built. And you know, working with pianos, particularly rebuilding them, I I had some knowledge of acoustics, and so that's how I came up with the design of the the curved over top, and then kind of a dome shape in the in on the bottom in the middle and then a post that comes up off the top of the dome shape to prop your phone onto. And it sounds great. It's a, a I it, honestly, it's something I can't keep in stock because I sell out of them every week. Yeah, well, uh, they work so well. I, I've seen a, a demo that you did and the yeah. sound was absolutely amazing. Yeah, and got, I, got one right here. <laughs> and it, and it made me wonder if you had actually put any like scientific knowledge. Did you did you measure your phone? Did you measure Annie's phone? Did you kind of try all the phones and see, okay, this one works better or this one? Like you're going to have an iOS version and an Android version soon. Well, it's actually universal. 
um, because what I did is I use my phone to test it and make sure that the acoustics are good in it. But I've got a, a wooden dummy I made of a, a big, like the Galaxy Note 8 with a case on it. And so I, I've made it so that it's universally sized. It'll fit the biggest phone or the smallest phone. And I, uh, I carve ridges into the side um, of the, the amplifier. And that way with the smaller phones, you can still prop it up at the proper angle because the, the angle really does make a difference. And so you're able to uh, wedge the bottom of your phone under those ridges and keep it propped up at the right angle. And, and so I, and there was a lot of, you know, I, I, it, this is the, the latest design, you know what I mean? And, and it took definitely some trial and error and a little bit of, of tinkering around, but I'm pretty sure I've got it tuned in as good as I can now. Um, I want to talk about not just the mechanical tools that you have, but mm -hmm. one thing that I just experienced, which, which I've noticed in some of your, <laughs> some of your videos is mm -hmm. uh, you have tools that you use in your everyday life for um, communication uh, for the, oh. You know, the, for for everyday life, uh, you have the text to talk on your phone. Uh, what are some of the other tools that you have, kind of around the house or or, or um, aids, if you will, that help honestly, you kind of communicate through the day? Well, honestly, um, the the adaptive tools I've got are uh, my my Rotomatic in the shop, which is the only adaptive tool I have in my whole shop. And then uh, basically just my smartphone. And that smartphone, let me tell you, that iPhone has opened up my world in a way that I didn't even think possible before I got one. Because like I was saying, I really have no computer skills. I just, the, the speech programs that you install on a computer are, are very complicated. And there's, there's over a hundred different key commands you have to memorize, not to mention on the internet there's many times that you can't access the uh, pop-up windows or text fields that you need to complete like ordering things. Yeah. So I, it, and, and I heard someone say once that I, that smartphones are the best invention for blind people since Braille was invented. And, and it goes well beyond that even. Uh, there's even video games for blind people that I can get. There's really? even a, a car racing one that I, I've got that is really fun. I could just imagine the the input from the game coming out, you know, trying to explore what's going on at the same time. I I can just imagine sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming. What was that? Sorry, say that again. Yeah, I can imagine the the output from the game telling you, oh, this is going on and that's going on, and and oh, you're trying to you know navigate a video game which is constantly changing. I can imagine yeah. that can be a bit overwhelming. Well, the the games are designed specifically for blind people, so it's it, they're very friendly in that way. Like the the it, calling it a racing game is kind of a a, a a deceptive term because it's more like a driving game. You uh, you put headphones on and you hold your phone sideways, and uh, there's music that plays. And as you drift to one side of the road or the other, the music drifts to one headphone or the other. Oh, wow. And then, uh, yeah, it, it, and then uh, there'll be like a cow mooing in the road that you have to avoid, or uh, there's an elephant that'll stomp on you, and, and there's prizes <laughs> that you have to get. Are, you, you, are, know, you playing, so. are you playing Jumanji? What is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but it's, it's tons of fun. And there's, uh, I mean, I've got, Battleship, there's Space Invaders, there's one uh, uh, like Pong, uh, Frogger, there's tons of them. Wow. Uh, and, uh, and your phone, um, it, it, it's just the programs that are on it that have opened all this up for you. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The uh, voiceover is what the uh, uh, speech software is. I mean, there's Siri, which is the voice commands, but voiceover is the uh, uh, when you turn on that in accessibility that's when it, it activates the blind friendly uh, part of it and the funny thing is 
when voiceover is on, it is almost impossible for sighted people to grasp how to use the phone when it's <laughs> on. Because <laughs> the, the way it works is uh, you 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 touch an icon or or whatever it, it may be on the screen with your finger. Now that highlights it. Think of that like putting your mouse cursor on the icon that you're going to activate. Yeah. Then you double tap the screen and that activates it. So, but here's the, the catch. Um, whatever you highlighted last, whenever you double tap the screen, no matter where you double tap the screen, it's going to activate whatever was last highlighted. So, it, 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 they, so for instance, the weather icon will be a, a highlighted on the home screen, but they want to go into Safari and I'll tell them, okay, you got to, you got to touch it and then double tap it. And so they just double tap it where that is. And of course that takes them into weather, not Safari. And I try <laughs> to tell them, no, that's not how you do it. <laughs> I could just imagine you being a prankster. <laughs> hey, I do love to tell blind jokes, honestly. Do you really? I do. I love it. Do you have one for us? Well, okay. I'll I'll tell you my favorite one. It's actually on on TikTok, but it's been a while, so you'd have to dig for it. But okay, so there's this plane full of people, and uh, they're they're waiting for the pilots to get on, and the, finally the pilots come on and. Uh, they're both wearing sunglasses and one of them has a white cane and the other one has a guide dog and everybody's kind of laughing like oh these blind guys are messing with us and, but they they go up and they go in the cockpit and they close the door and the the engines start up and they taxi to the runway and and they're going faster and faster and everybody's they're freaking out they look and they see they're about to go off the runway into the water and they all start screaming and right then the the plane lifts up into the air with no problem, all smooth. And so everybody, you know, they're like, oh, it, it was just some kind of fluke. And up in the cockpit, one pilot says to the other, you know, Bob, one of these days they're going to scream too late and we're all going to die. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> yeah. That's really funny. I love that one. <laughs> and I think one of your recent tech, uh, one of your recent TikToks, you're like, oh, I love going for a drive. You grabbed your keys, went out to the car, started it up, yeah. and put your cane out the window. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, I'm like, oh my God, here we go. <laughs> this is going to be an adventure. Yeah, it's, it's fun stuff. It, I've learned that, you know, laugh at life. It really, it helps a lot. Sometimes it's really hard to do, but it's, it's better if you can try and find the, the absurdity in it. Just, I, I did, I've done some, some unintended gymnastics before. Let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> when, <laughs> the, huh? when you had your lawnmower at the bottom of the stairs. Yeah. Yeah. That's the one. That's the one and others. But, but that one was like, it happened so fast and I landed so perfectly on my back. I, I thought, did I, did that just happen or did I do that on purpose? <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. And I wish someone had been there to see it. Cause let me tell you, that would have been a sight. I know it. <laughs> oh, jeez. So is there, is there anything like a texture wise that you still find uh, a little difficult? Is there what now? Is there a texture that you still find a little oh. difficult? Um, not really. Most most textures don't really bother me much. I uh, oh. it it I love something. I love is uh, when you on the lathe when you're finishing up. You you sand while it's still on the lathe. You just turn it on and hold the sandpaper on there. And the cool thing about it is. If you if you're feeling the wood while you're sanding it, you feel it gets smoother. And to me, it's almost like rinsing dirt off of something. And and a, each successive you know grade of sandpaper makes it smoother and smoother. And it just it, in my mind, it feels like it's getting brighter and brighter. I don't know. I I love that. That's a great analogy. I've never thought of that. Hmm. Like I was wondering, like uh, over your left shoulder there's a wicker basket. Uh-huh. So I can imagine like oh which which basket is this or or 
you know mm. like there's a weird like my son gets really weird about textures he loves yeah. pop tarts but he hates like frosted mini wheats he doesn't like the mm. texture in his mouth yeah, um, yeah my son was also born three months premature and uh mm. has autism mm. so mm -hmm. there's just some weird textures he loves my mm. soundboard because he eats all the different colors and and things mm -hmm. like that and i go great i i'm glad you like it don't touch I have, yeah. everything, I have everything put the way it needs to be put and and just kind of watching him explore things he hates a fitted sheet on his bed mm -hmm. he loves he loves the feel of the actual bed that he sleeps on oh, instead yeah. of a fitted sheet so i didn't yeah. know if there was any weird like textures that you didn't like or no i mean I, I would say there's more the months that I like than not. I mean, I, of course, like something that's slimy is not fun, but nobody likes that. And, and, but uh, for the most part, like not, not really just, you know, I, I love when the, my wooden pieces are sanded as smooth as glass. And I, I love running my fingers through sand on the beach. Uh, stuff like that that's that's fun that those textures are nice, nice. um so uh, it, yeah. it's still very sensory oh yeah yeah definitely and uh you know it, it, not having a sense of smell is definitely a bummer but it, it's something that i don't i don't really notice it as much um a, and sometimes it's definitely a blessing, not a curse. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine it is. Yeah, yeah, and and it uh, well, and and the a lot like the uh, the uh, uh, colors and shapes that I see all the time, I get phantom smells sometimes too. I was going to ask about that. How does, yeah, how does I do. That work out? It, it, it honestly, usually it's good. It's like. Oh, that smells like sage or or cookies or something. And every now and then it is like, mm, man, that's funky. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that's pretty funny. I, uh, you know, uh, and I was, you know, because uh, I forget the name of the the syndrome that you called it. The oh, Charles Bonnet syndrome or it, Charles Bonnet. Is that like phantom pains? I guess or like phantom sight or. <laughs> Yeah, I, it is also referred to as phantom visions, and it's something that has not been very well studied, and so it's not understood very much. It's more the the part about your brain continuing to fire to, to keep itself entertained, so to speak, is is one of the theories. Or So I, I, I really don't know. I mean, I kind of think that it is that, but in my case... It's not just, I mean, oh, how can I put it? Like, yes, the colors and stuff are random in their motion. Very kaleidoscopic, actually. Um, but I'm able to visualize anything I want over, over the top of that. And so for me, it's been very beneficial. But from what I've been able to uh, find out in just investigating it, for most people, it's very disturbing or distracting because there it's, it's like images of people making nasty faces or it just different things like that. And for me, luckily it's, it's just shapes and colors and that kind of thing. And let me tell you at first, that was really hard to get used to because there's no getting away from it. I can't close my eyes. There's no turning it off at all unless I'm asleep. So getting to sleep, was pretty difficult and and sleep insomnia in general is very common for people that have gone blind really yeah yeah because the 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 cycle of light and dark the day night light cycle triggers hormones that are are connected to your eyes um when it gets dark it triggers a uh, melatonin um when it uh, gets light it i think it triggers serotonin serotonin but i it, think that sounds right yeah, yeah, but but it releases it, that light cycle very specifically uh, causes the release of those hormones, and so basically, I sleep when my body needs it, and I don't when it doesn't. I, and that I mean, there's sometimes that 
I have been up for three straight days wow. and just not able to sleep. And at, at one point during those days, feeling like I might never sleep again. Jesus. I can't imagine. I was going to ask how you're like, what's it called? Circadian rhythm. Mm. You know, yeah, how, how that's, you know, how you've adapted to that. But I'm sure of course, now the sounds of where you are can kind of trigger that. Oh, it's getting a little bit quieter out or, you know, now yeah. you have the birds chirping a little bit, a little bit more. Yeah. And I do keep track of time. I, I like to, I, I've even got alarms that that go off throughout the day to kind of help me keep track of time throughout the day. Particularly when I'm in the shop on the lathe, I I can get lost for four or five hours and and not even realize it until I turn off the lathe. Really? And you know, and it's that's not great. You know what I mean? That kind of it, it makes me mighty sore. And uh, and there's also a lot of times since I'll I'll fall asleep around nine I'll wake up around two and then I'm I'm up I'm bright-eyed I'm bushy-tailed but nobody else the the whole world is asleep until <laughs> seven or eight o'clock and that's when I start getting sleepy again so a lot of times I will uh, I will prepare uh, wooden blocks it's called they're called blanks when you put them uh, the wood that you put on the lathe and so I'll do all the night noisy work and prepare them the day before. And that way, if I'm up at two or three o'clock in the morning, I can go out and actually work on the lathe because the lathe, it, it's not very loud, you know, but preparing the blanks, I have to use the saw and my sander and those definitely are very loud. So you kind of prepare everything. I like that. Yeah. You know, I, I want to ask you a couple of questions. It's a little game I like to play with some of my guests. Mm. It's called this or that. Okay. Okay. Uh, now, of course, uh, some of these aren't, and we'll just play. Uh, cat or dog? Dog. Dog. Okay. You said you have one named Pickles, right? Yeah. Pickle. Pickle. Just one. Yeah. Uh, yeah just Net <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? YouTube. YouTube. Okay. Toast or eggs? Hmm. That's a tough one. Kind of depends. Uh, right now, I say toast. <laughs> All right, cardio or weights? Weights. Weights. All right. Facebook or Twitter? Mm, I Facebook definitely. Facebook. Uh, ice cream cone or snow cone? Ice cream. While walking, music or podcast? Uh, I actually I I don't listen to anything while I walk. That's not a that's not a great That's idea for a blind person. Yeah. <laughs> just, I just realized that as it came out of my mouth. It's all good. Yeah. Uh, swimming or sunbathing? Hmm. Sunbathing. Sunbathing. High tech or low tech? Hmm. Probably usually low tech to tell the truth. My high tech is my phone, but otherwise, you know, low tech. Nice. Uh, let's see here. What's worse, laundry or dishes? Dishes. Dishes. Hate dishes, man. I absolutely hate it. Oh, uh, no. Let's see. Sneakers or sandals? Sneakers. Sneakers. Okay. Hamburger or a taco? Oh, boy. Hamburger. Hamburger. Couch or a recliner? Recliner. Recliner. Email or a physical letter? Oh, boy. I would say email or I, – I mean, a physical letter would be something Annie would read to me, but yeah. – I. Yeah, I, I'd say email because my phone can read it to me. But really, phone call is what I... Phone call? All right. Yeah, yeah. Amusement park or day at the beach? Mm. Day at the beach. Day at the beach. Yeah. Uh, the 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 world famous question, toilet paper, over or under? Over. <laughs> over. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Pancake or waffle? Mm, pancake. Coke or Pepsi? Pepsi. Pepsi. Uh, cup of coffee uh, or a coffee cup of, or a thermos? Thermos. Thermos. That's right, because you do have one of those, don't you? I do. I, I've got one with a nice metal lid, and I've already made my mark on it, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I dropped it a couple of times. <laughs> yeah. Meats or vegetables? Meat. Meat. Uh, let's see. Save or spend? Hmm spend 
Who 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 wouldn't, man? Uh, I know. <laughs> oceans or mountains? Mountains. Mountains. Okay. Would you prefer winter or summer? Oh, I guess summer. Yeah, summer. summer. Okay. Uh, soup or sandwich? Sandwich. Beer or wine? Beer. Beer. What do you drink? I, I don't drink. I usually don't drink much, but uh, I uh, I like a nice micro brew, like a raspberry wheat or something like that. I I actually I like to brew my own beer on occasion. I make really? a sweet chocolate stout. Wow. Yeah, it's a yeah sweet chocolate stout with usually either raspberry or blackberry, and it's I love it. I've been perfecting the recipe since I was eighteen. And here's the funny thing about brewing your own beer: you can brew beer. When you're 18, but you can't drink it till you're 21. It'll be fermenting for a while, huh? Well, aging anyway. Fermenting only takes uh, anywhere from three days to a month, and then uh, you bottle it and and then you age it from there. Nice. Uh, Dine-in or delivery? Delivery. Delivery. Sweater or hoodie? Sweater. Sweater. Because I know you wear your jacket like a. Uh, like uh, uh, with with your overalls, I know you wear that a lot. Yeah, yeah, it. Uh, I've, I've got a, a sweater I like to wear out there. It, it gets a little cold in the shop in the and, wintertime. <laughs> and uh, I also know how you and Annie like to joke that sawdust is your pixie dust. Yeah, it's my glitter. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I yeah. love it. Yeah, sawdust is glitter for men. <laughs> That's right. Uh, when sleeping, do you have to have a fan on or no fan? Oh, uh, no fan. No fan. My wife is fan. We have four industrial carpet drying fans in here. Oh boy. Yeah, I cuddle the dog because she's warm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and last but not least, this is not a this or that question, but first off, before I say thank you for joining me, can you please tell everybody where they can find you and all of your stuff? Ah, uh, yes. Uh, you can find my stuff at theblindwoodsman.com, and that link will actually link you up with everything else. You can find my Facebook, YouTube, and TikTok. And if you want to just look directly on those, it's just The Blind Woodsman. Now that's also, a, it's a shared website because yours and Annie's stuff is both there. Yes, yes. You can get Annie's paintings and prints and things on, on there too. And uh, it's, it's pretty awesome. And re remember, it's The Blind Woodsman. Some people put just Blind Woodsman, which a lot of times will connect you to me in, uh, you know, by association, but the blind woodsman is what I go under. I, I love how your website is literally set up like a split screen. You're on one side and he's on the other side. Oh, yeah. pick them both. Why not? Yeah, there and, you go. Uh, and, and of course you guys have all your social links down there at the bottom that you can click uh -huh. on. And like you said, it links out to all of them, Facebook and Twitter mm -hmm. and, and YouTube and TikTok and, and mm -hmm. even if you go to YouTube and you type in the blind woodsman or type in John Fern as the blind woodsman, it pulls up all of your talks. That's cool. Which, which yeah, is great. I, and I believe uh, I was on Spotify earlier mm -hmm. and I typed in your name, kind of figuring like you would have a playlist, like a public playlist available. Mm -hmm. Didn't find one, but I did find a podcast that you did on the leg up life. Oh yeah. Yeah. And uh, it has a picture of you and Annie in it, and you can almost find all the podcasts that you've been on or, or done. Uh, but, John, I want to thank you again. I still have the jitters because I'm still so excited that I got to talk to you. Thank I you. I really appreciate this. It, it's an honor to, to do these. It really I, – I can't express how much it means to me to, to have people like you – you know, show an interest in me and, and help me spread my message along with your own. And I just, I want to thank you again. And of course, uh, not only you, uh, but of course the person that made all this possible, your lovely wife, Annie. And yes. uh, I, I do know that you guys just recently dealt with her father in the hospital. I hope he's doing well. He is. Yes. Good. He is actually bouncing right back. Good. And, uh, John, please stay safe, be careful, uh, and you are always welcome here. If you have any new songs you want to share, by all means, give me a, give me a ring. 
give me a shout and I would love to hear them. And of course, uh, also on the website, uh, on your website, you can also get uh, Blind Woodman stickers. Yes, and t-shirts. And t-shirts, which, which you just gave away a couple of uh, stickers. So uh, yeah, yeah. stay tuned to TikTok and everywhere else on uh, uh, theblindwoodsman.com and find all of John's stuff. Uh, give him a purchase. Take a listen to, to some of those demos that you see where you can uh, hear the phone get louder as soon as he puts it in there. John, I don't, I don't know if uh, – you know what agape love is? Uh, I don't. Where you kind of love mankind? Oh, yeah. I love I mean, you, John. I love you, you too, man. <laughs> thank you for joining me. I love mankind. Me. Love mankind. Brother, thank you so much, and uh, thank Annie for me, and say hello to Pickle. Yes, I definitely will. You're, you're welcome and thank you. <laughs> thank you, John. Talk to you later. Uh-huh. Bye-bye. Bye.